G'day fixers, welcome to a vloggy kind of episode. This is just me being bloody excited because for the first time, hand tools have entered the Fix It Fingers workshop. Until now, this is the only plane I have ever owned and ever used. When I first got it, I didn't even know what to do with it. These days, I'd like to think I do. I've got my jointed jig and a few other cool things. And look, it works. I've used it for basically replacing the big spiral planer. Um, I do do edges and jointing on here sometimes when I need to. It does produce good sawdust, but it looks like this, which is not how any self-respecting woodworker's sawdust should look. So, enter these bad boys. I have avoided the world of hand planes for three and a half years. I've touched a few, but I've never actually drawn a shaving, and I'm going to do that very shortly. Let's take it the little one first. A block plane, I believe it's called, because it says so on the back. A low angle block plane at that. What's the difference? Bugger me. No manual, it comes uh, QR code style, which I've already downloaded on the back of this card. And it also comes wrapped in this oily type paper, which I believe is to help stop rust. And apart from wanting to learn how to use hand tools, I just thought they looked dead sexy. They are of course from the Melbourne Tool Company, a recently established design branch of Timbercon. So it's basically just a home brand for them, really. Um, apparently they got together some woodworkers, industrial designers, and so on, and came up with a very trendy and cool looking packaging and branding system. Say what you want, Melbourne Tool Company, but uh, I suppose there's already Sydney tools. Why not? I cannot review this for you guys. I have literally never held a plane for longer than I am currently holding this one in my hand. Literally. This is the first time I have picked one up for more than two seconds. So all I can tell you is that if you'd like to learn more about these properly, particularly this little block plane, then head over to Paul the Wood Knight, because he does know his way around a hand plane and can even tell you what all these different bits are called. And he has taken a close first look at the block plane and I'd recommend you start there. Quite frankly, his video is one of the reasons I decided that this is where I wanted to jump in. So you can of course get much cheaper planes and I was looking at the Graz or Groz, I think they're called, but having read around, they're more trouble than they're worth really because while they are very cheap, you need to do a lot of work on flattening them and getting them all set up where I'm hoping in a minute or two, I will be able to take literally my first shavings with this once I've just read the manual and gone through. Um, it's covered in some sort of oil or something which I'm sure I can just clean off. I'll find out what solvent I need to do that best and make it all pretty and shiny. And from what I've heard, they are excellent out of the box. I don't yet have any sharpening equipment. I've just spent all morning on the internet scouring around, again, copying Paul the Wood Knight sharpening. Another link, another video up here. System, uh, and so that's something else I'm gonna to have to learn over the next few months. But for my light usage and to start off, I reckon I'll be able to get a shaving off these straight out of the box. So that's the low angle block plane. And as I said, I can't tell you what the quality is like with any authority. It feels solid. It fits the hand nicely and it's pretty and shiny. It's a medium range plane, not up there with the Veritas. I wasn't coughing up that sort of money to begin my journey into hand tools. These are equivalent effectively of the Luban planes. They may even come out of the same factory, not confirmed, but that's the rumor going around. Um, so they're designed in Melbourne, made in China, but made to a very high quality. And uh, look, I'll have to get a square add onto that, but I reckon she's gonna be pretty flat. Hang on, something else I have on order is an engineer square. Try not to touch the blade. That's pretty flat. Got my light over here, and there's nothing coming out underneath. As I said, not meant to be a review, just really satisfying my own curiosity. I wonder if they're square in this direction. That's pretty darn good, not the best square in the world. I can see the tiniest bit of light on one side, but I said that could be well be the square. 
I don't intend to do anything to the sole of these, and uh, once I get my sharpening kit, then we'll take a look at the blade, but honestly, I'll probably bugger it up and make it less sharp to begin with until I learn how to do that properly. Let's go to box number two. So from Timbercon, you can get them individually or in a kit because I don't own any planes at all. I decided to get them in a kit and I'm hoping that these two really get me through most of the planing that I want to do over the next few years unless I really get bitten by the hand tool bug and decide to jump in further. I'm guessing they release these two first because they're going to be the ones that most people will use most of the time. So I got them for a reasonably good price. I think they're a bit over $500 for the pair currently, 2022. I reckon that represents pretty darn good value if they are in that sort of mid-level price range. The packaging is also lovely. Again, no instruction manual, just a QR code. Again, look at that form-fitted foam that's got in there. That's just really, really nice. And really bloody heavy. I did not genuinely expect, I guess there is a lot of metal in them, but just how heavy these darn things are. I told you, I'm complete and utter newbie at this. So, same lovely styling. As I said, very heavy. Those handles are baby butt smooth. And... Paul and some others were talking about it's weird that like this part here is painted and that it had weird machining marks on there. Mine is certainly painted, but the milling on it actually looks pretty good. So I don't know if that was just a first batch or maybe when I figure out how to take off the blade, it'll be under there. I don't think it affects the plane at all, but that was one of the small negative comments that I've heard about these things. That just feels so nice, even to me who's never really handled a plane. It's just, it's just natural of how you want to hold it. I'm guessing the blade is extended, and we only ever rub this way. Thanks, Dave. I don't know how to extend the blade on that. That's how much of a novice I am. I'm going to have to read the manual and figure it out, but look, that is just nice. I feel like a woodworker. Have a piece of Australian cedar here, which is part of a current project. I'm going to quickly read how to clean and uh, set these up and see if I can get a shaving off there. My very first shaving ever. No bullshit. This will be literally the first time I've done this. Kind of excited. Point of the video. Okay, so as I said, the instructions come via a scan and they look like they've been written by someone who actually speaks English as a first language, which is always nice. Uh, I've just been going through them and basically I need to pull the damn thing apart first to give it a good clean before using it. So let's quickly give that a crack. Remembering this is literally the first time that I have done something like this and I'm going to be reading along as we go. Sharpening the blade, yeah, well we won't be doing that. Ooh, look at that. I have to put up a picture and it gives you a lovely diagram telling you what all the bits are called. That's nice. I like instructions. There I said it. First use. Your plane comes with rust inhibiting oil. It needs to be disassembled and cleaned off to begin. Alrighty. Lever cap, apparently. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. Yep, oil everywhere. Okay. And, um, yeah, looking at this one, the milling marks can't really see them. It is painted, but the million looks okay. I think he was looking at the block plane though. Alright, blade and adjuster thing. Oop, that pops out like that. Carve it in oil. Unscrew the front handle. The whole toe comes off. Alright. No, it says remove the mouth adjuster. I'm guessing that's the mouth adjuster. Oh, there she goes. Cool bananas. I've got to remember to put this back together again. You know what? You get the picture. I'm going to clean it all off, and then we'll put it back together again. Okie dokie, that's all clean. And the only thing I will note, as I said, not a review, just observations. I don't know what they mean. But things I wouldn't expect to see is there's actually tiny bit of rust under the lever cap 
and I don't know again if that's uh, meant to be that way or not, but that's actually incredibly bloody sharp. I nearly cut myself on it, and I don't believe it has any need to be. So other than that, uh, no real sharp edges except this one. The two edges on either side, I'm guessing that's probably a good thing uh, for the most part. If not, a very, very light sandpaper might take those down because they are quite sharp, actually, there and there. The top edge is not so bad, though. You're not going to hurt yourself on that. I've got a tiny bit of damage just up on the body under the paint by the looks of it. So that's probably what you're getting with your sort of your medium level type plane as opposed to the upper ones. I don't think any of that's going to affect anything. Just thought it was interesting. Now then, let's see if I can follow my instructions to put this damn thing back together again. I have no idea how big that gap is meant to be. So I just lined it up at the front. Now then, blade goes bevel up. Probably helps if I put this thing back in too. I must admit, I have always been slightly intimidated by planes just because I do not understand the ins and outs of how they work. Uh, it's got two holes, I'm guessing it's the first one. Okay, it says don't over tighten that. All right, so I'm guessing that I've got that lined up kind of straight. I don't know if I've got any blade showing though. Oh, it's all very intimidating. Funnily enough, I find power tools much more intuitive. Alrighty, after a bit of mucking around, I think I've got it set up. Let's give it a try. Fix it, fingers crossed. This is a piece of Australian cedar which I've reclaimed off an old window that we took out of here a few years ago. Now making a sign up. I can't take too much off because I don't want it to be too much thinner. But this will be the very first plane shaving I've ever taken, so let's shut up and start doing it. I hope this works. Ah, oh, would you look at that? Isn't it brilliant? <laughs> uh, yeah, there, there's no blade showing. Let's try that again. Alright, take two. Remember, this hasn't been sharpened, it's straight out of the box, and been used by an idiot. He doesn't know grain direction. There we go. That is my first ever plane shaving. And it bloody well looks like it. <laughs> Let's try that again. It feels really nice despite not being sharpened and straight out of the box. And I wonder if I'm going the wrong way. Grain direction, something I've never really considered. Let's try this way. Don't know if you'd call that full width or not. But I am very happy. Nice. Okay, now I've just pulled the block plane apart and we'll give it the same clean and a very scientific testing as its big brother got.
Again, got some small damage on the body. Which is weird, because it's packed and wrapped so well. But I don't have those... Uh, I suppose there's a little bit of that weird tooling mark as well. Here we go. So these are the weird tooling marks that other people have been talking about under the paint. I really don't think it affects much. You can barely notice them. I wouldn't have looked if I hadn't been prompted to do so. Uh, let's polish it and reassemble. Okay, I think I've got that set up right. Blade looks straight. Only a small amount showing. Okay, dikes. Let's give this one a run. Okay, yeah, that was probably still far too much blade. That's a very thick shaving. But take a look at it. Oh my goodness. For the first cut on an unsharpened blade. Smells great too. Oh, and that's smooth. Uh, yeah, let's, let's try and thin that out a little. I think I fixed it. Let's see. Much better. Again, that's no sharpening straight out of the box. How nice is that? Oh, smooth. Let's try taking off an edge. That's it, that's all it needed, literally one pass, and that is still much cleaner than I reckon I could have done with sandpaper, definitely much easier and faster than a router, just to take that harsh edge off. How lovely. Who would have thought these would be a good idea? And if I keep going, I'll get a nice little chamfer on there. Quick shout out to my mate Brian at Brian's Builds and Outdoors, recently rebranded. Go check out his lovely little YouTube channel if you have not already. He's a channel member of mine. If you'd like to join him, there's a join button down there where you can get a few different perks and a monthly vlog that I go behind the scenes on a few things in the Fix It Fingers workshop too. I'd be much appreciative if you have the coin and could care to do so. So there you go guys, that's my very first ever experience with a hand plane or two. Except for this. Don't worry, baby. Still love you. You're useful. But these are going to bring me much enjoyment. And the thing that I think I like the most about the past hour or so mucking around... I haven't had to put hearing protection on once. I'm pretty sensitive about my ears. So, um, that's just lovely. No risk of me going full hand tool. Don't worry. Firstly, it's too bloody expensive. And secondly, I've got these to work. I've got applications where I have found myself wanting something with a lot more finesse than that big bastard of a thing because while it's great at getting things thin quickly there's no control on it and these two tools are going to give me that control once I learn how to use them properly. It's all downhill from here I suppose. I've got the sharpening kit coming from various different places uh, and I'll probably do a video on that too. But for the moment that's my first look at the Melbourne Tool Company Low Angle Jack Plane and Low Angle Block Plane. And for my first two, I think they're great. Nothing to compare them to, but I think they're great. Alright guys, I'll catch you on the next one. Jane's out. One last thing before I put these away, which was slightly remiss of me, I have to give a big thanks to my beautiful wife, uh, who might have bought me these for my 40th birthday, which isn't until next month, but I couldn't kind of wait to open them and uh, get my hands dirty on a bit of hand plane action. Thanks, wifey. Love you. Hello. Blood. I'm real hands woodworker now. <laughs>